Welcome to my introduction to networking course, typically abbreviated ITN. This will be for the CCNA version 7 curriculum. Hello and welcome. This is a weird video for uh, my lab. So this is focusing on uh, Packet Tracer Lab 11.10.1. Uh, again, this is designing and implementing a VLSM addressing scheme. Uh, this is for the version 7 curriculum. So, uh, one thing I want to start off with is I had a person reach out to me saying, Hey, I'm struggling to do this lab and you do a video. So, I sat down and started doing the video and started, I started noticing there were logic flaws in some of the steps. They, they just they didn't work. So, I spent about eight hours diving deep into this specific packet tracer, and it was it was interesting to say the least. So, with that said, so there are three scenarios. Scenario one starts off with a 10.11.11, .11, sorry, a 10.1.1.10 address. Ignore the names. It might be displayed like this. How do I know this is valid? That's a more complicated question, and I'm going to explain that throughout this video. Here is something similar. Again, ignore the names. Again, same IP uh, range, but this is showing invalid. The way that this was coded is that this network has to certain has to have a certain level of IP addresses. This machine is coded to have a certain IP. It doesn't matter what the host says. The host counts are irrelevant. The grading scheme shows that this machine has to have a certain IP address, and it turns out that these addresses are flopped. Again, I'm going to explain how you can see if you have a valid or invalid scenario you're running through if you close and open the lab and you close and open the lab again and again and again you're going to get cycling scenarios so you have to find a scenario that actually is correct for you and that makes this a little bit more complicated scenario 2 is a 172.19.67 address uh, again this is valid ignore the names Here we have one that's invalid. Same address scheme, but I've noticed they are flipping addresses without adjusting the scoring sheet. Scenario 3, 192.168.203.0. 32 has to be on the right side upper. If you have this address, if you have this scenario and 32 is on the bottom right hand side, it's invalid. I actually did a full video walkthrough on this specific lab and it actually scored it based off of this information. So I did ton of walkthroughs on these three scenarios to figure out which was the appropriate valid invalid portions so uh, you have to check the chart now, that's really the only way to, to really get this so again as you open your packet tracer it will generate one of three different scenarios based off of what I just gave you the issue is the addressing floats around and so if you have the wrong addressing, then you're going to get different things. Again, ignore the names of the devices. Focus on the host count. So what do I mean by left and right and things like that? The three scenarios start off with east and west, police and school, or HQN remote. On one side of the screen will be the left side, and one side of the screen will be the right side. 
These are the two big scenarios. Left, right. Left, right. I didn't have an easy way to do this, but again, you're going to notice left and right. HQ and remote. Police and school. East and West. There wasn't an easy way to do with uh, to deal with this, so I uh, just one of those issues. So to make this even more complicated, because the names can change, the valid diagram. So depending on how you have this lined up, you're going to have the left bottom. So the left one network will equal 11. The left top network will equal 28. If they are flopped, so if 28's on the bottom and 11's on the top, that's going to be invalid. That The addressing scoring sheet is not going to score that correctly. On the right-hand side, the right one network should equal 47. The right top... Nope, oh, sorry, sorry. Right one should equal 5. Right top network should equal 47. So let's... Look at a few examples to make sure we understand this. I'm going to back up a few slides to scenario one. So, again, east is on the left side, west is on the right side. So, Based off of what I said, if our network is like that, oh, you know what? I need a little bit more room. If the bottom network equals bottom left network should equal 11, then it's a valid network. If the left network number 2 equals 28, we're good. On the right-hand side, right-hand side would be network 2 being 47 and network 1 being 5. That would be a valid, you can complete this and it will work. Again, right number 2, right number 1 left number two, left number one. So let's look at an invalid version of this. Again, east and west. One, two. Sorry, this was the easiest way for me to explain this uh, so that's why I did a separate video walking through how to find if they're invalid so we know a valid number one network would be 11 you'll notice in this example my left network number one is 28 does not matter how you do the networking this one will not provide you a 100% completion because it will actually expect you to do that and if you are going into this and you don't know that information you cannot get a completed verified score sheet so on the west, again, bottom 
the right hand side number two should be 47. Right hand side number one should be five. Again, these were flopped. And so that's what makes this an invalid scenario. I went through all of the scenarios to verify this. And that's why I was able to figure out what's valid and what was invalid. All right, so. Scenario two. Left hand side. Network number one has to equal 19. Left number two has to equal 23. Right side number one has to equal 11. Right side number two has to equal seven. And let's double check. So let's check. More back up, scenario two being valid. So the statement I just made was left, right, west being the right network. So the number one network had to be 11. The number two network had to be seven. Number two network, seven. Number one network, 11. This is a valid example. Number one network has to equal 19. Number two network had to equal 23. Network one, 19, good. Network two, 23, we're good. All right, so let's look at this guy. I don't like that. I'll do my lightning bolt. Again, one, one, two, two. Number one has to equal 19. Number two has to equal 23. Number one has to equal 11 on the right. Number two has to equal seven. All right, network one on the right-hand side is seven. It needs to equal 11. Otherwise, the score sheet will not score it correctly. So this is network two. It's showing 11. Again, that's not going to provide a accurate it won't let you complete it. It won't give you 100%. So this is an invalid scenario. All right, we'll do one more. Scenario three. All right, this one is one of the weird ones. It starts off with the right-hand side. Right-hand side has to equal 32. Right hand bottom, or the right hand number one network has to equal 19. Left hand side needs to be 14. Left hand side number two network has to equal 21. If it does not line up like this, it won't provide an accurate result. Let's back up. All right. Nope. Let me erase this. Left side, right side. So we are expecting the right or the left side network one to be fourteen. Left network fourteen. This will be a valid one. Number two on the right side should equal thirty-two. Number two, thirty-two. We're good. Right side number one should equal nineteen. My pen is freaking out a little bit. Left side number two should equal 21. All right, so let's double check this network. Here, network number one is 32. That's not going to work. The way this is properly formatted is the grading sheet is looking for this top network to be 32. The bottom network 
is supposed to be 19. These addresses are flipped. The score sheet will not provide a accurate scoring if this is the one that is followed. Again, we are looking for network number 2 to be 21. This is not. It will not provide you a accurate rating. So those are the three scenarios, and that's how you can figure out if the scenario you're working on is valid or not. I will do separate videos on each of the scenarios, but as it is right now, that's enough to get you started to figure out if you're working on a scenario that you can even complete. Thank you. If you have any questions or anything, please feel free to reach out. Again, with this material, being able to ask questions and discuss some of the topics in the lecture help build long-term retention, so do not be afraid to, to communicate with this topic. Again, I'm here if you need anything. Thank you.